Again, welcome back to C++ Programming Course. This is Unit 2, Lecture Number 2. Our main objective is to solve two problems using C++ Programming Language. So far, we have learned how to input a data in C++ Programming, also how to do arithmetic operations, and how to display a result. So this problem is to find the slope of a line. So a two points is given, the coordinate of the points are S1 and Y1, and also S2 and Y2. We know in college algebra, again, a point consists of two coordinates, X1 and Y1, and the second point is S2, Y2. So if it's a straight line connecting these two points, we can find the slope of the line. And normally the slope will be the difference of Y divided by the difference of X. So this is again our C++ programming. We include our IO stream again because we are going to use the C out and C in. And it's in the standard library file. So we include the username space STD. And that's our main function. So the first thing we did is to ask the user to enter the coordinates for the two points. So we declare four variables. Their type is double. Also in C++, we, if we have as many variables as we have here, which we have four here, and they are all the same data type, we can declare all once. So here we write double, S1, Y1, S2, and Y2. There should be a common space between each. Then we use the C in to enter the four values. So we enter the S1, Y1, S2, Y2. Now, when we are entering the values, we should have at least a space or press the enter, uh, enter button. Now, for example, if we want to enter two for S1 and three for Y1, if we enter two, three, everything will go to X1. So when we enter two, we can press our enter key on our keyboard. Then we enter three for Y1. So anytime we are entering these four values, we can press the enter key between. Then next, we have to do our operation now. So we know the formula to find the slope is the difference of y2 minus y1 divided by s2 minus x1. Then we print our results. So here we are using the C out and we say the slope for the line that connects the two points. And the two points are x1, y1 and s2 y2 is so we have the formula here so we can see that the slope for the line that connects two points and this is a string because it's in double quotation this s1 will print because it's also in double quotation but we can see that the content the formula there's no double quotation if we place a double quotation within the formulas then we are not going to have a value, but rather we are going to print whatever we have. We're going to print the y2 minus y1 divided by s2 minus s1. So without the quotation, that gives us the result. So let's see this program. Again, I'm using the dev C++. So I already copy and paste the program here. So what I'm going to do first is to compile it. And so far, we, we have no error, zero, zero. Then we run it. So first, it's going to ask me to enter the four, the coordinates. So first, I'm going to enter four. Then I press the enter key before I enter six. Then I press the enter key, I enter seven. Press the enter key. Then it will give us the answer. So this means four and six and five and seven, the slope is one. Now let's try and enter all the values once without pressing the enter key. So for example, I want to enter four, five, six, seven in four of the variables, but I enter all the value once. You will see that it will ask me to enter more values. So at least I have to press the enter key or spell. I always like to press the enter key. So that means the four, five, six, seven goes to X1. Then we have the rest. Okay, so again, that's the program here. 
we ask the user to enter the four values, that's S1, Y1, S2, Y2. Then we do our computation and print it. Now let's see our next problem. Our next problem is financial application, which is to find a future investment value. So yeah, they say we should write a program that reads in investment amount. We also know the annual interest rate and the number of years. And then we're going to display the future investment value using the following formula. So to find the future investment value, the formula is the investment value for now times one plus the monthly interest rate that they gave us to the power number of years times 12. So for example, if the user enter 1,000 and the annual interest rate is 3.25 and the number of years is one, then the investment or the future investment value will be 1032.98. So this is also the same program concept, input, process, and output. Our process again is arithmetic operations. The formula is given to us to find the future investment value. So first we enter the investment amount. Then, so here we can see how we separate the C in each. And I think this is more readable, more kind of more better way to do it. So for example, in our previous program, we can say enter the value of X1, then we have seen for X1. Enter the value for y, y1, then we have seen for Y1. Again, that's what we are doing here. So first we enter the investment amount, then we enter the annual interest rate, then we enter the number of years. Each value have its own CRC in. So after we enter the three values, then we do our operation, arithmetic operation. The formula is given to us already. So first we find the monthly interest rate, which will be the annual interest rate divided by 1,200. Uh, the reason why we are dividing by 1,200 because the value we enter for the annual interest rate to be in percentage. So we know 12 months is one year. So we divide by 12 and then by 100 also to change it from, again, percentage to decimal. Then from there, we can plug in the value. So investment amount times the power one plus monthly interest rate and also the number of years times 12. And that's the formula given here. So after we calculate finish, we print the results. So we can also see the code. So I just opened the code, so we should Okay, so the code is open here for us. So again, as we can see, we now the reason why we are importing the C mat because we are using the power function. We are using the power function. So we import the C mat. Uh, first, we have our input, the investment amount, and also another input for the annual interest rate. Then we have the number of years. First, we find the monthly interest rate, which is annual interest rate divided by 1,200. Again, the reason why it's 1,200 because monthly is 12 divided by 12. The value is in a percentage, so we divide by 100 to change it to a decimal number. Then we apply the formula here. Then we print our result. So that will be the conclusion for these lectures. Again, our main objective is to go through the two questions and see you in the next class.